working with audio on the playlist is even more fun in Free to Loops, uh, especially compared to other um, digital audio workstations. Um, so say let's grab a, a beat. We'll drop it in. Now, Fruity automatically detects the tempo information if it was stored within the file, so it's automatically stretched it to the appropriate length there. But um, up here, let's say we can, as with any other audio file, stretch it out. And uh, of course, it's stretched it there. Um, now, if we wanted to, say, chop it up and just get certain beats out, again, we can very quickly sharp auto slice. Now, it's Now it's important here to note that it hasn't actually created a new channel here. So in, in every one of these little files, it's still got the full file there. They're all referencing the same file. So if I was to grab this one and um, change the pitch, it's gonna change it on all of them. So um, as we did with the patterns, if we go make unique, it'll make a, it'll make a unique copy there. So if we now pitch that one down, all um it, it it does it applies it separately um but as you can see even with this second one it's got the full full file there so again we can stretch that ooh, if we take off stretch we can uh, see that it's all still under there but look if you only really wanted to edit that one file um, there's a lot of uh, extra space or RAM used on that um, on that little audio clip when you just wanted that one little slice so rather than um, make unique, we can go make unique as sample. And this lets us uh, save a new file and it saves particularly only that one little slice, which can be um, very, very useful. Um, again, uh, then applying stretches or applying whatever we want to that. we can start to very quickly um, get some different effects out of the beats. And of course, because this top layer, um, we can, oh, again, take off stretch. That original original part of that file is still there if we, if we did ever want it. Um, <clears throat> um, one of the other things here on any one of these files, you'll see there's a de-clicking, and normally it's just set to transient, which is fine. But sometimes you want it to be able to fade it a little bit. You might notice changing these doesn't actually doesn't, doesn't seem to make a difference. So what we'll find though is as soon as we shrink it slightly, you can see how it's gonna how it's gonna fade off, fade it off. And of course that's where these these different settings um, come into come into use, um, which is very useful for maybe just applying very very small um, a volume fade, especially if, uh, for zero cross issues and that sort of thing. Um, but of course, if you've got two separate audio files, um, another thing that you can do if, the, if they're overlapped is uh, click on the first one, highlight them both even, uh, automate crossfade with banana breaks. And this will apply a crossfade, which you can then, um, which actually will automatically change the volume of those two files as they, as they do crossfade. Another, another cool, cool thing to do um, is uh, if in any one of these files up here, if we just do a volume automation, um, we can um, just apply uh, a volume a volume envelope. It's important to keep in mind though, if I was to turn this down here, It applies to the whole file, so so if you do apply any of these volume automations, it, it can be important to um, say start it a little bit. We'll set that to slide. Start a bit later. Just make sure it's always going back up to the full volume. <coughs> 